last bit of news is out of India, uh, triple talaq. India criminalizes Muslim instant divorce. We actually discussed this in a previous um, article, Arvind and I did. Uh, India's parliament had approved a bill that makes Muslim practice of instant divorce a criminal offense. Uh, triple talaq is known um, as it's known allows a husband to divorce his wife by repeating the word talaq divorce three times in any form, including email or text. Uh, supporters say the new measure protects Muslim women, but opponents say the punishment is harsh and open to misuse. Uh, men found in breach of the new law can be jailed up to three years. We actually did a report on this that uh, confirmed that. A man has already been been sentenced uh, up to three years for trying to divorce his wife using this method. Um, so the the bill was first gathered and, and, and presented in 2017, but it wasn't until Tuesday uh, that the bill actually passed 99 votes to 84 after a number of walkouts and absentees. So there were a lot of people who didn't want to vote on this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, the BJP party is for it, um, the, think, the I, opposing party. I huh? think we need to clarify a few things for people that don't know what the BJP or Triple Talag is, right? Well, I, I, I did say what Triple Talag is, but okay, yeah, yeah you, I, think, I think this would be great for you and Subham. Okay, uh, no, uh, sorry, Ali, did you want to add anything before I interrupt you, sorry? Uh, I just wanted to say that that the the BJP party in India is is for it. Uh, the other party is against this. So I think that uh, Subham can probably uh, tell us more about what that means. Okay, so the BJP party is the right wing Hindu nationalist party, right? And the Congress, the opposition party, is like the center left party, but they are kind of like Muslim apologists. Like, oh, really? Like any the, left wing party the, in the, the West. Why is it so common for left wing parties everywhere to become <laughs> close to Islam? And left wing parties in non Islamic countries, by the way, are so. Are, I don't understand. But, okay, because I guess they're always trying to protect minorities, and all of a sudden, instead of protecting minorities, they're protecting an oppressive ideology. But go on. Sorry, Shipan. Yeah, so, like, this bill, this bill was, like, loved by BJP. Of course, because of their anti-Muslim stance, and it's obviously hated by the Congress. But the thing is, like the upper house in the Indian Parliament does not have a BJP majority, and yet the bill passed the upper house. Right. So, okay. So, just to be uh, clear, the the BJP is like the Hindu nationalists, and yeah. the, the, it might be. I actually support this law. The triple talaq is very, very unfair, okay? Uh, triple talaq means men can just divorce their wives uh, just by text message or on Facebook or on Instagram just by saying talaq, talaq, talaq. Talaq means divorce. You have to say it three times and you're divorced, right? And a lot of women have been abandoned like this in India, a lot of Muslim women. And the thing is, like, if you are divorced, by the way, Shupam, you correct me if I say anything that is wrong. It's really hard, it's very difficult for women to get divorced because it's kind of like they, they, they're like used products, right? It's really, you're basically abandoned financially, there's no support for you. It's, it's, it's such a devastating thing, right? Um, it's not just that, uh, it's not just that, I mean, in India, like if you get divorced, uh, the society might look down on even some men and Women, like it's absolutely devastating for women. This, uh, ma much of the society looks down, so much down on women who are divorced right. just because they're divorced. Just because they're divorced. If you're okay, so and and the thing is that, um, you know, we have been uh, an atheist republic, we have been really, um, we haven't been holding back against Hindu nationalists, right? Or the BJP party and the way they treat Muslims in many different ways, and the you know, how India is becoming more and more. Um, bigoted against Muslims and Muslims are being oppressed. Uh, but this is not one of those examples. This is, I think, this is a fair law uh, because, by the way, women don't get to do that to men, right? Women can't triple tell up men. It's only men that can triple tell up women, right? Based on Islam. And the reason why, I, I, last time we talked about this, I said like, okay, this is a good law, but I don't understand three year jail for triple tell up. Why can't you just make it, make it so that the divorce is not legally standing. 
So what I didn't understand back then is like because laws in India don't mean anything unless okay, you, yeah. unless you but really I, I, really pressure people like if unless you really go after people, right? So you could what they did was they made it illegal to have triple talaq. But the thing is that these Muslim communities, it's like they don't, they could just ignore that and they have their own laws, right? If they divorce somebody, even if it's illegal under the Islamic section in their own Islamic area, this woman is divorced, whether the government recognizes as divorce or not, right? Islamically, I'm divorced from you. So I don't give a fuck what the government says, right? But now, because apparently these Muslims don't recognize the authority of the government and they don't consider a divorce, now they're adding a three-year sentence to, so that this is scary now for Muslim men to just divorce their wife. Is that correct, Shapam? Uh, yeah, um, kind of. Like, I, I just want to say one thing. Like, I bought, brought up this stuff, like, why the three-year sentence to many people who, th who are actually supporting this law? And they all said, I mean, they're not like Hindu apologists. They even said, like, even the dowdy system of Hinduism is criminalized. So it is obvious that this should be criminalized because in India, when the husband divorces a woman, it is absolutely devastating for the woman and they throw them out of the house and all. So I was like, uh, just uttering a word thrice, like if you utter talaq thrice, that shouldn't get you jailed. I mean, what should get you jailed is if you abuse your wife or something like that. But just the utterance of a word three times, that absolutely shouldn't get you to a jail. Wait, so you're saying that uh, that's a harsh sentence? Uh, just... Like I'm saying like, uh, if, if it's like, if you just say like, uh, for example, I mean, if you are Muslim and if you just say talaq 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 to your wife, mm. that can get you to a jail. I mean, I right. don't think that's the thing you mean. I mean, you can, I mean, that's just saying talaq, that shouldn't get you to jail. I want to say that. I mean, after that, if you like throw your wife out of the house and right. okay. something so, like that. So you're saying that just the word, saying the words shouldn't get you arrested, but if the, yeah. the process of getting rid of your wife, the process of kicking out of her out of her house, yeah. that should be when the government yeah. step is. So I think that's fair. I think because then it's very dangerous if you just make words. Because, so, because then I, I, the I thing is, like, it's just saying certain yeah. words. I don't know, actually, what if I say, what if uh, uttering certain words can be more than just free speech? Like, what if I say, what if I call somebody, what, somebody that is working for me and I just say, kill him and then I hang up, right? Uh, and the, I think even if that person doesn't end up being killed, if somebody records that and goes to the police, right, and know like I'm a mob boss or something, I think I, my defense can be like, oh, I, me just saying kill him, that shouldn't be criminal. I think, no, it should be criminal. Like sometimes uttering words means uh, means that actions, you, you said it with the intention of act, certain actions are going to be followed. So I don't know. But you're right. That's a fair. That's a fair point. I don't know at what point we is free speech and uh, at, uh, what's the what's the line here that you're crossing that is beyond just free speech, right? But that's a very. I mean, inciting inciting violence through a speech is already not considered as free speech in India. No, okay. But what if I violence. say? What if you get a recording call of me giving you instructions on how to con our customers, like saying mix this product with water? Right, and I'm not doing it myself, and I'm telling you to do it, right? Uh, but giving you instructions, and you're working under my instructions, so I'm co I'm conning people, and you and somebody has a recording of that conversation. I think that that is just words, but again, it's an intention of conning people. I think that could also be criminal. I don't know. I'm not saying. I'm just wondering. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. I mean, in, in it's we are talking about India. I mean, it's right. about the bias they have. Right. By the way, who said that? <laughs> By the way, it's about their bias. Yeah. yeah. It, it, by the way, the source of this law might might have been bigot. It may have been like being anti-Muslim rather than like they're saying that this is for women rights and is like the BGP and these Hindu nationalists are saying that we're doing this for the sake of Muslim women. And we understand that that might not be really their intentions. Their intentions might be a big fuck you to Muslims, right? But whatever the intentions are, this is a good law, I think. I mean, I mean, if maybe if it was tweaked a little bit so that it was the way Chopin wants it to be, right? Um, so I, but I'm just saying it, it, this, it shouldn't be allowed to treat women like it's, it's one-sided also, especially because men can do it to women and women can, can do it to men. This is not equal. This is unfair practice. 
and I do see why the government needs to step in here. Um, but I also do understand that the Hindu nationalist intentions might not necessarily be like, oh, we're Hindu nationalists and let's go protect women, Muslim women. I understand that there might be something else happening here. And I think so it's, it's absolutely not for going to surprise because the people who are supporting this law, the jail, jail term especially, they are the same people who are like, when they go out handing out BJP and Hindu nationalist pamphlets in the city, hmm. uh, they're handing out those pamphlets to women who are wearing like traditional clothes and all but if like a girl young girl like wearing shorts and jeans and hot <laughs> crops and like that like if they walk up to them they will just ignore them like they don't they don't even exist or like abuse them or something like that all right it's yeah. absolutely biased okay well another point i really want to make is that uh, most muslim countries have banned triple talha right so Pakistan has banned. So a lot of people, a lot of, I don't. I would just want to say the Muslims in India that are saying this is oppression, fucking bullshit. Like bullshit. Like even if the in Hindu nationalist intention was not necessarily equal, woman equality, uh, equality uh, between men and women, this is not the uh, Muslims that are calling oppression. This is this. I mean, go look, look at real oppression in India. Right? Look at the like the way Muslims are being treated in other ways in India. This is not one of your examples of oppression. Okay, this is actual equality. And if you are saying this is oppression, Pakistan, an Islamic country, has banned triple talaq. Right? Bangladesh has banned triple talaq. I think most Islamic countries have already banned triple talaq. So if you're like these Muslims are saying, they want a higher level of privilege in a in India than they give Muslims in Islamic countries. So that's a, that, you know, the fact that they're demanding that sh shows a, such a high, I don't know, such a high level of hypocrisy that even the ones, even the Muslims that are, are supposed to be defending their fellow Muslims uh, in India are focusing on the wrong things. But go on. Shupan. Yeah, I think this was just legal just because of the left till now. I mean, if it was up to the right wing, then this would have been illegal years ago. Just the left, like, they are minorities, it's their thing, let them do it, and that's why it was legal for now, I mean, till now. Right, let me read the top comment. Um, I think it's somebody from India. Yeah, I'm profiling people based on their name. But uh, saying, while, while I appreciate and welcome the decision, I would also like to point out to the international community uh, that it wasn't as well intentions as it looks on the surface. It was more about the rights, the right wing Hindu parties, government scoring a point against Muslims. Okay, Hindu atheists and um, and Santan something bring on the hate to this government. Uh, I appreciate that comment. This person is, I think, is from India and is saying like, actually, that's exactly what we thought. We we said like we this is a good rule, but the intentions wasn't necessarily a good. Uh, w was just mostly to make a point against, um, make score against Muslims rather than actually bring uh, gender equality. Um, Ali, do you, do you, what do you think? Do you think? About, about gender equality and, and... No, do you think the intentions, the, uh, probably the intentions was not really to defend Muslim. I don't, I don't think, when it comes to the BGP, I don't think, I think it's safe to say that protecting Muslims is not t under <laughs> one of their top priorities, right? So, okay, but uh, is there anything in the live stream also, other than your own comments, if you want to add comments, live stream, anything else? All good? Yeah, um, I mean, I I don't think that this really was... I think, I think that you can actually do both, and I think maybe that's one of these things. I don't know the BJP party very well. I do hear often how evil they are. Um, and so that being said, I think that it is possible that they do care about the women in these in these situations. Uh, and they also are doing this because I, I think that it's possible they're doing both. Right. B is saying the police have talked to the woman, don't know if there if any changes will be laid. So any charges will be laid. Wait, so were the charges were they actually charges or just threats? Sure, Men have been charged already. Oh, okay. uh, you and I reported on that. Yeah, Someone yeah. has been sentenced to three years in jail so, already. So what is it? Why is this news again? Because the law just passed? 
because the law actually just passed making mm. it legal so that they were already anticipating this by the time you and I reported on the news like two weeks ago. Um, and so now it's actually passed passed. GV. OK, so here's a question for both of you from GV. GV saying counterpoint. How about making the talaq gender neutral? Women should be able to leave their husbands instantly, too. Isn't that how it works in the West? And no, well, I think that's yeah. unfair to women simply because they don't own anything. So why, you know, if, if they're if they're put in this situation where they're they're married to this guy, no matter how big of a jerk he is, he's the one putting the roof over her head. It's not like she has equal freedom to really do anything. So right. it's still not it's not fair. Also, the process is not like that in the West. Uh, divorces are very expensive and long legal processes um, in Canada and I think also in the United States, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so no, it's not as straight as like, hey, let's get divorced. Okay. Uh, it, yeah. it is. It is. Someone close to me got divorced a few years ago and it was like a tick process. Really long where? and where? costly. Oh, no, not uh, a relative of mine got divorced, not by talaq or anything, but it was, it is, the divorce thing is really a hectic process in India. In, in India. India. Okay, in India, okay, yeah, in India for people that are not following Islamic law, right? So even yeah. in India for other people, it's a very hectic and legal pro uh, law. So basically, for everybody, it's a very long and legal and expensive process, including women if they want to divorce their husband. But the only one that get to bypass all of that is Muslim men that want to buy, that want to divorce their wives. So for everybody else in the West, in India, everywhere, divorce is extremely difficult. But men, Muslim men in India, until until recently, could have just said talak, 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 and that's all they needed to do. And it's unfair if the if if the rest of society has to suffer and go through divorce. Uh, we want equality, they have to suffer as well. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.